a privilege to be speaking to <coughs> a packed house of doctors on a Sunday morning to be coming here to listen to uh, people like me. Uh, uh, I must appreciate the effort you've taken. Why has the IMA got me here? I guess that's because journalists and doctors have a uh, lot in common. One I feel is uh, <coughs> in medical school you learn about the perfect human body but in life you see only imperfect bodies. All your life you see imperfect bodies uh, and you may wonder where one sees that perfect body, it doesn't exist. Uh, similarly in journalism school, uh, students are taught about how democracy works, what the constitution uh, <coughs> provides you etc. But in real life we see that uh, hardly anything works what's there in, on paper. In fact, uh, we have a journalism student uh, doing the MC here uh, today, Bhavna Vijayan. <coughs> uh, there are, there's much more in common actually. Uh, for doctors, they say we, you, you guys look at what's wrong with somebody. A doctor will tell me what's wrong with my left ventricle. I would rather ask him, uh, is, why don't you say what's right with so many other things in your body. Uh, journalists also see a pothole on the road, but the government may say, why don't you see 7,000 kilometers of beautiful national highways and you see that one pothole and report that. Uh, so, you know, we are, our work entails similar stuff and we both apparently have B negative blood group, we are always negative, uh, we find what's wrong, uh, we do the same thing and you guys get, uh, you know, your hospitals get smashed up when something goes wrong with the patient. We also have our share of stone pelting and tomato throwing. Uh, which must be why I am here today to interact with you. Uh, Dr. Sri Kumar, in, the, in his opening remarks, he said, whatever you report should be scientific. And we have great trouble <coughs> getting numbers. And when you don't have numbers, it means you have no basis for what you're talking. For example, if I were to ask doctors in Trivandrum, even somebody who's practicing uh, uh, you know, pediatrics, if I were to ask them, do you have a number of people in Trivandrum district who are under six. Who knows? Who knows? Without that number, I will not even know whether, you know, I'll have some scope to be practicing as a pediatrician in this district. But in develop, developing countries, this is one problem with not only doctors, but everybody. The numbers just are not there. Let me just ask you a, a, a random question to just get all of us to know how wrong we can be about numbers. Can you guess the number of people in Kerala who will celebrate their 100th birthday in 2019? Make a wild guess about how many people in Kerala will celebrate their 100th birthday this year, starting January. We are now in the fifth month. Any guess? We can all make guesses because the Kerala government does not have the number, so it's safe to make a guess. Ten is one guess. Five. Five is another guess. Twenty is another guess. Three hundred is a is a different guess. Two more guesses and we'll stop. We've got five, ten, twenty, three hundred. Eighty. Eighty. Thousand. Well, let's stop at that. Well, since we don't have the number, I cannot tell you how much it is, but we can draw a conclusion from a comparable statistic of a developed country. Developed countries have numbers for everything. Britain has its numbers. Kerala's population is 3.3 crore. Britain has a population of 6.6 crore. Exactly double. Exactly double. And Queen Elizabeth sends a personally signed birthday card to every UK citizen who hits 100th birthday. So she knows the number of cards she signs every year. And the government knows. On an average, she sends out 6,600 birthday cards every year. If we are 3.3 crores, there must be 3,300 birthday cards to be sent out by Pinara Vijayan. We don't have the numbers and names. And Canada is supposedly on par with Europe. 
in that case the guesses of 10, 5, 80, 20, 300 and all are far off the mark. Somebody who said 1000 should be appreciated. Adam, you said that. Okay, great. Uh, my guess is somewhere close to 3000 based on the UK numbers. So, you know, one great challenge for both you and us uh, is uh, lack of numbers. Let's see some numbers here. Those who are aged over 65 in the world, in the in 1950s, of the world population, only 5% were above 65. 2015, that is 65 years later, 8%. 8 and 20 or 30 years from now, it will be 16%. Geriatrics, anybody here? Great scope in the coming years. We are all going to be old. Kerala particularly leading the country. And now tech is changing the landscape. I come to the, the context of today's talk. It's all about digital. In the media also we are going digital. So all print media is dying. Uh, thanks to my age, I escaped print media because by the time it was dying, I could come out. Uh, so in the medical field also, tech is changing the landscape. Uh, fabulous things are happening on a daily basis. Just six days ago, this Monday, this past Monday, Google said it had developed artificial intelligence to predict the presence of lung cancer in patients. Now, uh, when you communicate to media, and if news has to appear in media, it has to be interesting. Now, this is a single line. It is such an interesting, impactful news, and yet, many of you who are sitting in this room would not have heard of this, despite being in the medical profession. I mean, this is just six days old, this news. Why haven't we heard this? Because whoever informed it to media did not put it in any context. It was a single line saying, I can predict lung cancer. Oh, I thought lung cancer was predictable even before. If you put it in context, it becomes so interesting, it can become page one news. Just to put it in the Indian context, doctors say that this is important because lung cancer is the most difficult to predict. If you add an Indian context, it becomes even more saleable as news because New Delhi is the world's most polluted city. It has overtaken Shanghai. Now we all die of lung cancer because of air pollution. So this news is most relevant to Indian audiences, yet I have not read it in a Malayalam paper, I have not read it in a, in a Hindi paper or a Tamil paper, not even in an English paper in India. While this news, though announced in the US, is most relevant to our country. A cousin of mine recently moved from Bangalore to Cochin, the techie, saying he's got two small children uh, and they cannot stand, they both have wheezing, they cannot stand the pollution levels in, in Bangalore. I thought Cochin was highly polluted, but he says comparably it's a haven. So he's moved. He says in Bangalore, there is hardly a home which has small children without a nebulizer. Every home has nebulizers in Bangalore, if there are small children. It's become unlivable. If Bangalore is unlivable, imagine Delhi, the world's most polluted place. So then connect that to Patanandita. It's got the least pollution. No wonder children live up to 90, 70, 72. Every girl child born in Patanandita has uh, 72 plus uh, life expectancy equal to a girl child born in Washington DC. So this is what media and doctors together have to do. One line of some great development doesn't mean anything until it is linked to something interesting and something that we can relate to. Uh, Danny Dwill, uh, he says heart paint printers will be a common feature in hospitals within 10 years. In 10 years, we will be printing hearts in Toronto. <coughs> And those hearts will resemble the hearts of those from whom it was sourced, the cells were sourced from. Well, hearts are being printed, but we don't know because there's been some communication gap between the medical field and journalists. Or it has been communicated, but we didn't understand it properly. Uh, please understand as doctors that uh, for us, any sector that we interact with, they are all technical. You know, one day I cover a press conference of ISRO, the next day I cover a press conference of some Kathakali artist. Now, how am I supposed to know how satellites are sent to space 
And how do I, am I supposed to know how Kathakali is performed? I mean, both of these take years to understand. So, the onus is on each sector to make us understand, so that then we can tell somebody else. So, the teaching part is on you. So, that then we can communicate with clarity to our stakeholders.